We marinate for a couple hours at least. And if you have the foresight and the godlike patience, do it the day before, a full 24 hour marinade would be awesome. Overnight for 12 hours would be second best. But if you wanna just do it for an hour or two, it's still gonna be amazing, all right? A lot of you guys have been asking me to review that Duke and Cook, and today we're going to see how Sonny makes his butter chicken. Now, Sonny does have more than 20 years in the professional kitchen cooking, I believe internationally, if I'm not mistaken. And he did get very popular after Ramsey was responding to a lot of his cooking videos on TikTok. And I have seen a couple of those, but this is the first time that I have ever seen him in a proper video. So guys, if you do happen to enjoy this video, then be sure to give it a like, maybe a share. And remember at half a million subs, we will be making our own egg fried rice. So if you wanna see it, be sure to subscribe. Now, let's get started. What's up, dude? Let me start by saying I absolutely love Indian food and I plan on doing more of it on this channel. And if you're anything like me, you also love Indian food, so a great place to start is with butter chicken. It is one of the most popular Indian curries in the world. And today, I'm gonna show you how to whip one up with some garlic naan to dip it in. You gotta have that if you ask me. And as always, my friends, there is no time to waste. Now, let's go. I do love Indian cuisine and I do love a good butter chicken. Guys, let me know in the comments down below what your favorite cuisine is and what type of curry is your favorite? Or more specifically, what Indian curry is your favorite? Is it more traditional? Is it butter chicken? Because butter chicken is a relatively new invention. Let me know. Today I'm using chicken breast for this butter chicken. If you want to use thighs, you can go ahead. Those will be just as good. I just happen to like breasts better for this curry. I'll start by trimming a little bit of fat off this breast if necessary. And I'll remove these little tenders right here as well. And then I want to slice them into nice big cubes. I don't want a little skimpy piece of chicken in my curry. So something like this. So you get a good chunk of chicken every time you take a bite. And with the tenders, same deal. Just cut them into big cubes. I'll also remove that little tendon that's in the tender. It may be a good thing that Uncle Roger's not reviewing doing this because he wouldn't like the idea of using chicken breast very much. But in any case, me personally, I do prefer using chicken breast. However, there are some dishes, especially if you're going to be cooking the chicken longer, it is better to use chicken thighs, chicken legs. Just make sure that you cook it perfectly, but like perfect. Because if you overcook chicken breast, especially if you defrost it too long in the microwave and then you cook it more, it'll be like rubber. And I don't like rubber chicken. I hate rubber chicken. And also when cleaning chicken breast, it is important to remove that little tendon that Sunny removed and any other, say, tendons that you may see or any bones that may still be attached as well. Sometimes the butchers miss them and any large veins that you may see in the chicken breast. It's not a necessity, but it's just something that, well, for me, it's a force of habit to cut out any of the large veins and anything that's just not nice to have. Our chicken is gonna get two marinades. The first is lemon juice, this beautiful Kashmiri chili powder that I love so much, and some good old fashioned salt. I'll just give this all a good mix. We'll just let these ingredients work their magic for about 20 minutes first. For the second marinade, we're gonna be using some Greek yogurt, a little bit of neutral oil, that's just avocado oil, ground fenugreek, turmeric, as well as some ginger and garlic that I just ground into a fine paste with my handy dandy little thing. I don't know what it is, but it's awesome. And garam masala. Mmm, interesting, two marinations. Let's see if he's going to add any smoke to this. In a few of the other videos with Chef Renvy and Your Food Lab, both of them added smoke to the chicken at different times for the reason being that normally butter chicken is made with tandoori chicken and tandoori chicken is made in the tandoori oven. And because of that, it has a bit of that smoky flavor and aroma and they wanted to, well, infuse that similar smell into the dish. Now it's not a necessity to do this and we'll see if uh, Sunny's going to do it, but it does add a little bit of, you know, like a little extra to your dish. All your spices for the second marinade now going in, getting colorful here. Yum, yum, yum. The oil and the yogurt. And just mix it all up again, making sure to distribute those spices. Oh, I can't tell you how good this already smells, my friends. When raw chicken makes you hungry, you know it's gonna be good. At this point, the ginger and the garlic is also going in. Give that a mix in. Let the garlic and ginger enter the chat. And now you hurry up and wait. We marinate for a couple hours at least. And if you have the foresight and the godlike patience, do it the day before. A full 24 hour marinade would be awesome. Overnight for 12 hours would be second best. But if you wanna just do it for an hour or two, it's still gonna be amazing. All right. I fully agree with this. If you're going through the effort to make your own butter chicken at home or anything for that matter, even with curry or any other dish and you want to marinate the meat, it's a good idea to do it ahead of time to give that meat a little bit of a chance to marinate, especially if the meat needs to be broken down or tenderized. So in other words, don't just marinate it for like 10 minutes because you're going to get a lot more out of it 
if you marinate it a little longer. Now, if you ask me, you can't have a great butter chicken without some incredible fluffy garlic naan. If you wanna make rice with this, go ahead. I'll put a video up in the corner right now for that. However, dipping that garlic naan into the curry is a beautiful experience and I recommend it to everyone. Recipe will be in the description, but we're starting with lukewarm water, active dry yeast, little pinch of sugar so that yeast has a snack. Now we'll give that a little mix and let it sit for about 10 minutes. Now we add one egg, some oil. This is just avocado oil, but you could use another kind of oil and some yogurt. Mix that all together. Just add some salt to your all-purpose flour and give it a good mix. This is the second non recipe that we've actually seen. We saw the first one with Joshua in his little tandoori chicken video. Now Joshua didn't add any egg to his. He did add yeast. Now some recipes don't add either egg nor yeast because some recipes are completely vegan. Now, another interesting thing is that a lot of my viewers from India, I've actually said that none is not that common to make in the houses, but it's more common to have when you go out to a restaurant in India. Now, I don't know if that's true for a fact, but um, it is interesting to see that or to hear that. Then I'll just take a pile of my flour and make a little well here in the center like so. I'll pour my wet ingredients into that little well I just made. Made? This is scary stuff. If there's a breach, we're screwed. Ugh. And what I'm doing now is just pulling in flour from this little well into the mix. Ooh. He's right about that. You can use a bowl. You don't have to make a little volcano and then uh, mix everything together on the countertop. But this is another way of mixing all the ingredients together. And you do have to be very careful because like he said, if you do or if you don't pay attention to this, if you have a little breach, you can have quite a mess on your hands. I need to make my well a little bigger, all good. And we'll just keep working that in and you'll see your little well begin to thicken up. You can also do this in a bowl. I just like doing this, I think it's kind of fun. Oh, there's a breach. In the end, it always works out. If you have a KitchenAid or a stand mixer, you can also just use that. You can see now it's really starting to thicken up. I'm just tossing in a lot more of the flour now. I'll now switch to this little dough scraper, start pulling in a lot more of that flour. And eventually this will turn into a kneading process. At this point, I'm gonna start really pushing the dough together and just scraping as I go. And you wanna just knead this now. And here we go, our dough has really come together. I'm just kneading it out a little bit. So it's nice and smooth, slightly sticky to the touch, but not really sticking to your hands very much at all. This is one of those recipes that if you don't have a sand mixer or if you decide to make it by hand, you're gonna get a good workout. You can see how much force he is using actually on his countertop by every time that he is pushing down on the bread while kneading it is actually pushing the counter down as well. And there we go, my friend, just about five minutes of kneading. And I'm just gonna create a little tension on the top by pulling from the top down to the bottom like so. And we make a nice little ball like this. And into a bowl it goes to prove, cover it with a hot, damp kitchen towel for 40 minutes to one hour, depending on how hot your kitchen is. We just leave this out at room temp to rise. That is very true. It depends on how hot your kitchen is. And since we're going into summer here, it's not a problem, but for everybody in the southern hemisphere, then they're going into winter. You may want to take this into the warmest part of your house. In Washington in the winters, what we used to do, we had a wood burning fireplace. Anytime that I would make any bread and I would have to proof anything, that I would take it and put it on the mantle, not directly above it because it was too hot, but a little off to the side. And it helps, it works. Because otherwise, if you leave this in a cold kitchen during the winter, you're gonna be there for hours. And I mean hours <laughs> waiting for the bloody thing to proof. Our naan has been proving for about an hour now. And I'm just gonna drop it out onto a lightly floured work surface so it doesn't stick. Now I'm just gonna roll it out into a rough little log. You can make these not as big or as small as you like. I'll do about 10 out of here, portion them out. If some are a little bigger or a little smaller, it's all good. In fact, I think I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's cool, they'll be big. Looks like a nice little pillow, doesn't it? And all we need to do now is roll it out to somewhere around a quarter of an inch thick. That looks good to me. Nice irregular shape as naan should be. And it's ready for the pan. Before we cook the naan, we need to make the garlic butter for it. So into a little pot over medium heat, I'm just adding unsalted butter. Butter. When the butter's melted, we're gonna add some slices of garlic and a nice big pinch of salt. Just about three minutes with the butter and you turn that off and just let it chill. We are gonna add some herbs to this in a minute, but not till we cook the naan. I've just brought a really lightly oiled pan up to high heat. Now, anytime that a recipe says that you need to add such and such to the pan, when it's smoking hot, this is what the recipes mean. Not to the point where it catches fire, but like 
ripping hot. Anytime that you add food to the pan, it will drop the temperature of the pan. And if it's this hot, it's going to cook a lot quicker or you're going to saute when, if you're going to be sauteing any onions or anything like this a lot faster as well because you keep the temperature up. Drop in your naan. After just 30 seconds, we're gonna flip. They cook really fast and you can see it's starting to bubble up now, which is cool. There we go, another 30 seconds and it's totally done. At this point, I'm adding my cilantro to the garlic butter last minute. If you don't like cilantro, if it tastes like soap to you, try parsley or another herb of your choice. That will be fine. And we just brush with our garlic butter and I'll cook all the naan and then just layer them up like this, one on top of the other. And happy days, my friends. Now guys, if you haven't seen Joshua's video on making tandoori chicken. He actually went the extra mile to buy a tandoor oven to make that uh, video and if you haven't seen it you should definitely go see it after this I'll leave a link down in the description below now for all my Indian chefs watching let me know your thoughts down below on this little recipe to make none is it something that you would say is good for the Western kitchens we use a lot of yeast and we also use egg in some of our recipes as well so it's common to use these ingredients but um, let me know your thoughts. When your chicken is done marinating, it's time to, well, cook it, right? You could do this in a pan, but I'm gonna do it under the broiler to get a little bit of that fiery taste. I'm putting it on a sheet pan lined with tin foil. I'll just spread this out nicely so we don't have any large clumps of chicken that steam and not brown. Something just a little like this is perfect. I cannot tell you how freaking good this chicken smells. I can't wait until it's cooked. Now, one quick tip, guys. If you don't wanna use aluminum foil, you don't have to use it. You can just use the sheet tray, that's fine. It's gonna be a little more work cleaning it, or you could also use parchment paper. The reason why he's using foil is because he doesn't want a lot of mess. And trust me, if you don't want to be there scraping the you-know-what out of your uh, sheet tray, it is a good idea to use something. My broiler is set to high heat. I'm gonna jam this chicken under there and we're gonna keep a careful eye on it. What we don't want to do here is overcook the chicken. It needs to finish in the sauce. And away it goes. All right, there we go, just about five minutes under the broiler. And what I wanted was these little charring bits, which I got right here. I wish there was a little bit more of that, but my broiler isn't that powerful, but this is fine. And this is also a very good little trick if you don't want to do this in a pan. However, it does depend on how good your oven is. My oven is only a few years old, so it cooks really well, but I still have a little oven thermometer just to check the actual temperature of the oven. Now you wouldn't have to use the oven if you actually had a salamander. This is the piece of equipment that we use in the professional kitchens. They're very versatile, not common to have in your house, but they work very well. And if you are afraid of overcooking the chicken breasts, then I would suggest using chicken legs. For the tomatoes, I chose these little sugar bomb tomatoes. Why did I do this? Because these are the best tomatoes I can find in November in America. If this was the summer season, I would be using a different kind of tomato. These are just really sweet. And so they're gonna make for a really, really great sauce. However, if you can't find these, just use another kind of tomato. It will work just fine. Oh. <laughs> And what we're gonna do is make a little tomato puree out of these tomatoes. So I'm just throwing them all into a blender. Whack on the lid and blend it up. Simple as that, can be a little bit chunky. I just did that for about 10 seconds. Now if this was French cuisine or, and more of a French or classic recipe, those little cherry tomatoes would have to be peeled more than likely. And trust me, peeling little cherry tomatoes when you have like kilos of them is not that fun. Now, when I was in Hotel Arts in the Spanish kitchen, they showed me a quick way on doing this. Pick all of your little cherry tomatoes, go over to the deep fryer, make sure that the oil is clean. This is important as well because you don't want the flavor. Put not too many into the basket, just enough, drop it into the oil, and you want to take these out as soon as they start peeling. Now these are going to be popping and you need to be very careful because you can get some oil in your face. I got hit a few times with hot oil but you do need to be quick about this. So as soon as they start peeling, take them out of the oil and put them in some ice water to stop the cooking process. It's very easy to overcook them, so you don't want them overcooked because they'll be mushy. But if you do it just right, the skin will peel off and it'll make your life a lot easier. You may want to wear gloves because it'll be a little oily. It's time to build this curry sauce. I'm turning a pan onto low to medium heat and we're throwing in a stick of cinnamon, a chili that I just cut a little slit into it so it will release its heat, a few cardamom pods, and a couple little pieces of clove. Now I know what you're thinking. A lot of you don't have these spices. You can just skip this step and go to the next one if you don't have these. But we're trying to be pretty authentic with this butter chicken so we're starting with this. These have been toasting now for about four or five minutes. At this point we're adding our butter. That's just 
unsalted butter and we'll continue toasting these spices off in that butter. The spices have been in the butter for about two minutes now. I'm gonna remove them. Those spices are just meant to flavor the butter. Now I'm putting in more ginger and garlic. Just ground up like the ones before for the chicken marinade. We'll toast this off for a minute. Now this is a little different than Chef Ranvi's video because with his recipe, he actually blended all the spices after cooking them down. Now about the cinnamon, depending on what type of cinnamon that you're using, because there are many different types of cinnamon, this looks to be one of the most common that you probably have even in your pantry. Cassia cinnamon, the bark is a lot thicker, it's also a lot stronger, the flavor of it is a lot stronger and it may be even a little spicy. Now the bark of the true cinnamon, Ceylon cinnamon, is much thinner and the flavor profile is also a little sweeter, it's not as spicy, so just keep this in mind depending on what type of ingredients that you're using, what type of cinnamon as well, it will change the flavors. Once that garlic and ginger is nice and fragrant in with the tomato puree, this color is gonna change. I know it looks a little bit like a watermelon popsicle or something right now, but as this cooks, it will deepen in flavor and color. Well, it looks a little like a spatula. I'm turning up the heat now just to a little over medium and we'll let this cook down. Butter chicken gets really creamy, not just from the butter and the cream, but from the cashews. It should have cashews. That's very true. The cashews will add a creaminess to this because they contain a lot of oil. At this point, I'm gonna season it up a little bit. Just adding about a teaspoon of salt at this point. We can add more later if we need to. A little bit more Kashmiri chili powder. Tiny little bit of sugar, just a teaspoon. Wow and the color is starting to get really incredible, partly due to the tomatoes cooking and partly due to that chili powder I just put in. Wowza, wowza. I'm also just dumping in the juice that came out of the chicken because that's just flavor and it might as well be in your curry. You may notice I didn't put onions in this butter chicken and that was on purpose. Authentic butter chicken doesn't have any onions in it. You'll see a lot of people putting onions in it and you certainly can if you want, but you don't need to. A curry like chicken tikka masala is meant to have onions in it, but butter chicken, no. Now that is interesting because if I'm not mistaken in every single butter chicken video that we have reviewed including with Indian chefs everybody has used onion in the butter chicken here it is after about 12 15 minutes and as you can see the color is absolutely incredible what we're doing is almost turning this into like a loose tomato puree as it's cooking down the flavors are really deepening here we are after 20 minutes of reducing this down and as you can see this tomato juice is turning into a paste which is what we want and these flavors are really starting to get enriched it smells pretty darn good in this house right now I'll tell you that much I'm sure his house does smell very good while making this. Uh, one little thing that my dad used to do is that anytime that we were selling a house, he would actually bake a loaf of bread before any showings. And I think it worked because every time that he did this, people used to say, oh, the house smells so good. Oh, wow. This would be a lovely house to buy. So who knows? Smell being one of our five senses is extremely important, especially with chefs and in the kitchen because the last thing you want is to eat a dish that doesn't smell very good. Here we are, 25 minutes later, and you can listen to this sound. It's gone from an evaporation sound to a sizzling sound. So all the water is removed from the tomato, and what's left over is the tomato sizzling in the butter with the spices and the cashew. Now we're starting to get some real crazy flavor. Another three minutes of toasting, and we have like this tomato puree. You can see this now, right? At this point, we add water back in. We'll go ahead and bring this back to a simmer. Back into the blender we go, and we blend on high for one minute. You don't have to do this next step, but for an extra velvety smooth sauce, I'm gonna pass it through a chinois strainer. And I'm just pushing it through now with a spoon. Make sure we get that all out. Don't wanna waste a single drop, although that's impossible. Just be thorough. We are almost done, my friends. A little more garam masala. Fenugreek, these are toasted fenugreek seed. Now this is a beautiful looking sauce. The consistency looks perfect. And as I said earlier, you can tell how the cashews have emulsified this sauce. Of course he did add butter in the beginning, but the butter that he had previously was already split because he used it to cook with. Now at this point you just want to make sure not to put this on high heat and to let it rip because you can split it. If you can find the leaves that would be best. Now a little bit more butter coming in at the end. Just cold unsalted butter for that extra creamy touch and of course a little bit of cream. Fill it all out and finish it all off. The last thing we need to do is put in all of our chicken which is going to add a ton more flavor as well. Get in there you. And I've got the heat just low right now. I want to be gentle with this chicken just to warm it up in the sauce. Totally cooked through but not overcooked. The chicken has been in the sauce on low heat for two to three minutes. I'm just putting a touch more salt now to 
to finish up the seasoning aspect. And happy days, my friends. There is your butter chicken. Let's just garnish it up and serve it with the naan. Let's serve this up in our traditional Indian bowl here. We'll finish with just a little bit of cold cream, as is per tradition. This is really more for the look than anything, if you ask me. Some more of those fenugreek seeds, but if you had the leaves, that would be better. And some cilantro, but if you don't like it, just leave it out. And there is your traditional butter chicken, my sweet, sweet, sweet friends. Coming in for a taste. Oh gosh, I'm hungry. I'll speak more about this in a minute, but this looks delicious. This looks so good. My favorite thing to do is take some naan. Uh, okay. Poor little fridge. I wonder what the fridge did to deserve this treatment, being stuck in the backyard and used as a punching bag. It was probably a bad little fridge. It probably defrosted all the food in the freezer and spoiled everything in the fridge. So, I'd do the same. Make like a little tiny taco out of it, hold it up. It's got a mild to medium kind of heat to it. The chicken is absolutely tender. And when you have it inside of the garlic naan, holy f Give it a shot, my friends, and until next time, you know I love you in a minute. I really enjoyed that video, and I enjoyed the recipe as well. The recipe looked delicious. There was a few slight variations from the previous recipes that we've seen from both Chef Ranvi and your food lab. One thing I would suggest if you want to infuse more of that smoky flavor into your butter chicken is to do what both Chef Ranvi and your food lab did by infusing the smoke into your chicken. But other than that, let me know what your thoughts are down below, guys, in the comments. I'm gonna have to review more recipes by Sunny because I like his videos. I like them a lot. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did. And if you did, then don't forget to give it a like, maybe a share, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button because it does mean a lot to me. Be sure to check out this next video coming up here, and I will see you guys again later. Until then, take care.